Um, hi, I'm Scott Chris Lee. I'm a computational biologist in uh, Dr. Lindsay Cowell's lab here at uh, UT Southwestern Medical Center. I'm the, um, the technical lead and the project manager for uh, VDJ Server. And so I'm going to talk to you today about VDJ Server and um, how we've integrated in the in incantation framework within it. Um, and uh, talk about some uh, um, future directions and capabilities as well. So quick overview of the talk. So um, I won't be able to go into a lot of detail about VDJ server, but I'll give you a quick introduction on some of its capabilities. I'll talk about um, how we integrated the incantation tools um, and some of the, um, the, the, the challenges that we had and things we overcame to do that. Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about some uh, future things um, that are coming out of the air community efforts, including the, the standards and um, the air data commons. And um, I'll talk about the VDJ server community data portal, which is uh, part of that air data commons. Um, and, and then finally, uh, uh, some future capabilities. So, okay, so what is VDJ Server? Um, I think maybe it's been around for a number of years now. It's, a, it's an NIAID funded um, cloud-based analysis portal and data commons for immune repertoire sequences. Um, it's designed and focused um, not as a programmatic tool, but as a graphical interface so that biologists, uh, immunologists, clinicians, and so forth um, can use it with sort of minimal, um, minimal to no programming um, expertise required. Um, so for that, it, it sort of handles a lot of things. It has a, uh, it has a data management infrastructure so that we can handle um, these large sequence files, we can archive them, um, and then there's ways to, to, to share them. Um, you can keep those files, you know, keep that data private, or you can share them among groups, or you can make them public. Um, and, and along with all that, we also uh, uh, keep track of metadata. Um, oops, sorry. Um, the main thing that it does is sequence processing and analysis. So we have a number of um, validated software modules um, and uh, standardized and reproducible pipelines. Um, we utilize the high performance computing resources at the uh, Texas Advanced uh, Computing Center. Um, this means that we can analyze and process really large um, data sets. Um, you know, we have a number of studies that easily go into the hundreds of millions of sequences. And um, so these, the computing resources can, can handle that. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the, the how we got the incantation tools to, to work on there. Um, and the other big piece is the user interface and visualization capabilities. Um, and I'll show some more of that, so. Okay, so the actual, the VDJ server architecture itself is, is pretty simple. Um, I don't show all the components here, but I show the main components. The, um, the user interface uh, runs within the, within the web browser. Um, it's called a JavaScript single page application. That means all the functionality is within the web browser. You don't install anything on your um, computer at all. Um, that application then communicates to server side processes through um, various uh, APIs. Um, we have one that's specific to VDJ server, which is down here, which we call the VDJ API. Um, um, this handles a number of sort of specific tasks. And then I mentioned we were, VDJ server is cloud-based. So it, it's all running on top of a, a cloud infrastructure called Tapas. 
Uh, TAPIS is an infrastructure that's been developed by the Texas Computing Center. Um, so they handle a lot of the, you know, scaling, um, you know, scaling and partitioning to handle more requests and so forth. And this infrastructure is pretty nice because it gives us a lot of capabilities. It, it, it gives us, um, um, you know, user accounts so we can manage individual user accounts and permissions associated with them, uh, you know, files, applications, jobs, notifications, metadata. These are all sort of different APIs for different data types. Um, and it interfaces with these um, supercomputers um, on the back end for running jobs and it handles a lot of the, the things dealing with transferring data and so forth. So. so what's the basic workflow for VDJ server? Um, it, it depends a little bit upon what type of read data you're starting with. Um, if you're starting with, um, you know, paired end or single ad reads coming right off the sequencer, then you often need to do some pre-processing of that, right? Um, some of the other talks mention that. Um, um, and after the pre-processing, you typically look at some statistics to see like, you know, are you, are you at the quality level that you want and so forth. Um, after that, you, you annotate those sequences with the VDJ calls and, and other um, sequence annotations. And then finally, you get to go and start performing um, um, analysis and then, and then visualize that analysis, All right? Um, okay, so here's just another view of the, the analysis capability that, rep that VDJ server provides. Um, um, broken up into sort of different uh, categories. So there's analysis of the, the sequence itself. Um, and then there's uh, uh, repertoire analysis, which is, you know, a sets of, of these sequences, sets of rearrangements. And you want to um, 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 look at various statistics um, on, on those repertoires. Uh, then you also want to probably compare those repertoires to compare those characteristics. Yeah. Um, and then other things like um, um, lineage tree calculation and somatic mutation analysis. So, um, so uh, the incantation tools um, um, provide us with uh, a, a lot of those analysis capabilities that um, I mentioned on the previous slide. Um, so here's the main tools that we use. Um, Presto is in there for um, read pre-processing. Um, now, those of you who have used Presto know that there's a lot of sort of parameters and, um, and uh, there's a lot of flexibility in how you can use it. Um, we've tried to uh, bring a lot of that forward into the interface so you, know, you, can, you can do uh, barcoding, you can do primer masking, it has the UI, UMI um, handling in there as well as kind of standard things, uh, length, quality filtering, um, and collapsing of duplicate reads. So you pretty much almost have the full suite of capabilities there. Uh, Changeo we, we use to do, um, the, to, to assign clones, do the clonal clustering of the of the sequences. Um, Alakazam then provides us other sort of statistics like uh, diversity diversity profiles on the repertoires, um, physiochemical um, properties on individual rearrangements, um, the lineage reconstruction, and Shazam for mutation profiling and and selection quantification. Right. So so all of those are available. Um, um, in VDJ server. Okay, so um, when it came to integrating it, there are sort of three um, three ways to, uh, or, or three things that you have to do to integrate a tool in VDJ server. You have to you have to design, devise a user interface to actually run the analysis, parameters and setting and so forth. Um, uh, we have to get the tools working on the. Um, the, the HPC supercomputers. And then finally, once you get some output, you want to visualize it and, and provide some um, 
some exploratory analysis, some exploratory settings for the user. So, so um, parallelization was one of the sort of the, the main challenges. And this ends up being kind of a different thing, uh, uh, different for each tool, right? Each tool kind of has different capabilities. Some of them can be um, what's called embarrassingly parallelized, which means that um, really all you need to do is you either split the, the data in your input files or you split the actual tasks and run them in parallel. Um, and then you might need to do some, some merging after that. But there's often then no changes required for the tool. Um, now the interesting thing we've discovered is that a lot of these repertoire tools are very memory intensive. So um, um, what you'll find is, is that you can't, on a single node on, on the cluster, you can't typically run too many processes, even though if that node may have a lot of, may have a lot of cores available. Um, some of the HPC machines don't typically have lots of memory. Um, there may be only like 64 gigabytes of memory, for example. So um, what you see a lot with, with tools, and this is true, I think, in incantation, but in a lot of other tools, is they started adding um, multi-threaded capability um, to, to essentially have some inherent parallelism in, in their algorithm. Um, we try to use this when we can, but often what we find with our really large data sets that um, having a tool process lots of data multi-thread tends to have problems both with the sizes of the input output files um, and also um, memory usage can can exceed what's available on it right so so these are things we sort of discovered as we ported the incantation tools and um, 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 we've we've resolved most of them meaning that all of the tools uh, scale fairly well. Uh, but as I say, there's, there's a lot of variation in data patterns. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how much there is a difference between, let's say, a, a naive T-cell set and how many clones you get out of that compared to, let's say, you know, um, other selected cell subsets where, where maybe the clones are not so big. So. Um, so there's a lot of variation there that often makes the, the kind of doing the computation a little bit of challenge um, to paralyze it properly. So, um, but one of the main things we discovered is that alpha, it tends to be better to have many small tasks versus one really large parallel task. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. One is, well, it keeps it within the resource constraints of the node, but also if there's any type of failure, um, you know, you can at least sometimes get some partial results out instead of sort of losing the whole, um, losing the whole computation if you do it in one large task. Okay, so um, here's uh, some of the visualizations that VDJ Server provides. Um, there's sort of two main sets. There's pre-processing visualizations. Um, and I won't go through these in detail. I think you've probably seen a number of these before. They're similar to um, some other things. These are though uh, um, specific to VDJ server, meaning we're not, we don't use the incantation tools to produce any figures. We have them pretty much just produce the, the raw output results. And then these graphs are um, interactive visualizations that are used in the browser. So. Um, while I'm on the PowerPoint, I can't show you, um, you know, how it's inter interactive. Sorry, I keep clicking the screen. Um, but you can see down here, for example, in panel E, you see there's sort of like a scroll bar here that I'm pointing out, right? So, you know, so this is like something you can move around across the whole length of the sequence and look at, um, in this case, individual quality scores. Um, averages um, and ranges for each nucleotide position. Um, and in this case, these are pre-processing. So these are showing both like before and after, pre and post filtering. So you can see the effects um, of, your, of your quality, of your filters, pre-processing filters. 
Okay, and then um, other visualizations, other examples of visualizations are on the analysis side. Um, uh, uh, standard ones, you know, being B gene, being gene segment usage, um, length histograms, your your clonal abundances, diversity, um, and then the selection quantification. That's that's one of the specific um, uh, incantation tools that does that. Um, now we've we've enhanced it so that all of these graphs allow you to do comparative um, comparative analysis. Um, so, for example, in A here in the in the gene segment usage, there's two groups here, um, the blue and the black. Um, sorry, the the screenshot didn't get the legend for this, but this is is this is a comparing. It could be possibly two individual repertoires, but you can also do. Uh, comparisons of groups. So you may have a repertoire group, which is like your normal group and your and then your treatment group. And then um, many of these graphs we show uh, groups. And in that case, actually B here is a good example. When it's a group, we give, um, we provide uh, uh, averages and um, standard error bars so that you can see the, the variation in that group. Okay, so um, now for the for the the rest half of the talk, I was going to shift gears um, a little bit. I, I think many of you are familiar with this, and Steve mentioned it in the beginning about the Air Community, um, how they've been developing standards. Um, there's a there's a number of standards out now. One, a a minimal information standard, um, and this is you know so. Uh, when you publish your study, the minimum on information you want to provide about your AirSeq data set. Um, Scott, I just wanted to give you the heads up because you said it was the other half that there's a, we have about five minutes left. Okay, great. Thanks. I was looking for my clock and I don't, <laughs> um, will do. Uh, and then so a lot of the work has been on data representations. Um, but then a real recent thing now is, um, an API that allows you to query and download data from, from repositories. Um, and so this is the, the, the Air Data Commons. So what is the Air Data Commons? It's a network of, of Air repositories. Um, there's a few of them already. VDJ Server is one. Um, um, iReceptor is another one. And um, um, there's more that are coming online. Um, and then they're all based upon this one same API, which allows for programmatic query. You can query both at the study metadata level, things like, you know, subject characteristics, sample characteristics, but you can also query at the rearrangement level. So you can query, like, for example, a specific CDR3 amino acid sequence, or you can query only the rearrangements of a particular V gene. Um, and, and so forth. So um, there's a, a manuscript that describes that API and, and all of the associated data models that's under review that should hopefully be out um, pretty soon. Um, so just to give you an idea of how this data commons is, is growing, um, uh, we're showing two, the two, two big ones right now, iReceptor and VDJ server. Um, as you can see, we're, we're um, we're projected for um, multiple billions of rearrangements that you can um, query upon. Um, the number of studies is not overly large because um, a lot of what the work we've been doing is putting in these large studies. Um, over time, there'll be even um, more and more. Um, and uh, so this is really great. This is gonna be, this is all public data. You're gonna be able to query it, download it. Um, um, Specifically for the VDJ server one, it's available to all of our users. Um, you don't have to really do anything uh, you know, with us. There's a button that just you click on and it will publish your study. Uh, besides making the data and metadata, it also makes all of the analysis and visualizations that you've run available to the public. So they can, those same interactive visualizations I showed before, um, uh, anonymous users on the web um, can can do that can play with those visualizations. A um, couple informations. I mean, VDJ server. We're planning to to 
to be exceptionally large. Um, we were working with the Texas uh, Computing Center and their database group to actually manage a database that's going to um, eventually be, you know, terabytes in terms of scale and, and tens of billions of, of rearrangement records. Um, and the nice thing once that sort of comes online is that you'll be able to perform comparative analysis between um, your own data and data you query um, from the data comments. So, okay, so um, my last slide, which is just a, a couple future capabilities. Um, a lot of the work we've been doing lately is really to provide NN support for the air community standards. So that is all the tools within um, all the various pipelines and so forth are using all of the air standard file formats. Um, and there's some new experimental formats that are coming down the line, like clone and trees um, that, we'll, that we're gonna um, um, integrate. Um, the, the study metadata entry is all Meyer compliant. It has all the Meyer fields. So if you fill that out, then your study will be Meyer, Meyer compliant, and then you can, um, you can directly publish it right on VDJ server. Um, and then some really exciting stuff down the line. We saw some other presentations about single cell and paired chain studies. Um, that's coming out in the next version. We're, we're already adding some support um, for that. Um, uh, and that should be coming out in the next few months. And then always there's the need to have more. Everybody likes more visualizations, so that's on there. Um, so to finish up, I'd just like to uh, add some acknowledgement, acknowledgements. Um, the group at at TAC, um, um, Dr. Cowell's re group here locally, some outside advisors, um, Richard and, and Nancy, and then our, our funders. NIAID was the original funder of VDJ server. Um, right now we have a, an EU Horizon 2020 grant with iReceptor that's doing some enhancements. That's a lot around that, that data repository. So. Um, uh, thank you very much.